Let's go for a little ride. What the hell is that all about? A business deal that went sour. A B N. It's headphones, Neil. What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with a film saga review, um, more of a bonus review just because um, as I was um, thinking about um, Fast 9 and my review for that, I realized that I didn't actually go back to re-watch the prior films um, prior to watching Fast 9, so I thought I would do a quick review, re-watch re the films, do a quick review of my thoughts, but do watch them in a way that makes more sense as far as the overarching story goes rather than um, watching the films as the original intention of um, the street racing scene or the underground street racing scene and that sort of stuff. Um, and by the story order I mean more of like the family, the interpersonal relationships of this particular crew and that sort of stuff. So as far as the watch order. Obviously, I started with the Fast and the Furious, but after that, I jumped straight to um, Fast and Furious, the fourth film in the franchise, then Fast Five, Fast and Furious Six, and then I watched Tokyo Drift, then to Fast to Furious, and then rounded it out with uh, Furious Seven and Fate of the Furious. So the reason I watch it that way, um, notably, is because Tokyo Drift is the one film that definitely takes place after. Um, Furious 6, um, notably because of Han going to Tokyo and living there and then the whole crash and um, Deckard Shaw, uh, Deckard Shaw the, o the older brother I think it was, uh, whoever, whichever character Jason Statham plays. Um, and then I put Too Fast Too Furious after this because as far as all the events that happen in the film, um, while canonically Too Fast Too Furious takes place after the events of Fast or after The Fast and the Furious, it makes more sense after Tokyo Drift as um, later in the film because for me having um, Brian and Roman um, having pulled a random job to get back in the States, there's a mysterious mission that drove them apart. But because they're friends, they have this relationship together and the speed at which they come back to trust each other by the end of the film um, shows that there's um, more history to their relationship than is established by making it the second film. And the whole thing with um, Roman not trusting Brian over a lady that they worked with doesn't necessarily doesn't mean Mia because they're not married but could potentially have been any one of the other ladies in the uh, film franchise or even just a just a random story I mean that whole prior mission could be an allusion to the missions they've been on together or just a random mission that we don't see so that kind of all still falls into place um and the only scene that kind of pulls you out of it is actually a relatively small scene it takes maybe a second or less and that's when Brian introduces Tedge to Roman so um, by this point by putting it later in the franchise you would say well they don't they already know each other but um, moving the film later in the wash through makes it just as a thing that maybe because Tej was um, focused on the boat races it's kind of Brian just saying that hey here hey Tej uh, Roman is with me kind of thing rather than introducing them. So that all works together as well. And then in the watch of the movie, because by the end of Furious 6, um, Tej is working on opening his own uh, car repair shop, Too Fast, Too Furious makes more sense after that because he now has a, um, repair sh a car repair shop that's um, profitable, fully open. It's in Florida on the beach. It's something that goes kind of over the top. It works better with his character. Um, so by the time we get to Furious 7 and everyone's being pulled back into the underground racing world and Dom going um, solo with Cypher and Fate of the Furious and all of that, just all of that works better because we've now established the history of the characters. By the end of Furious 6, everyone is kind of falling apart, or not falling apart, but separated and all of that. So um, having Tokyo Drift 
um, bring Dom back to uh, f- collect uh, Han's personal things and the friend and the guy, the Sean guy from um, that Han met and all of that, and then um, Brian and Roman getting back together, and then ultimately Tedge getting um, being broke back in kind of makes it all flow that much better by the time you get into Furious 7 and Fate of the Furious. So overall, the franchise, I think, is a good franchise once you get over the whole idea that um, every all the stunts and action that they're pulling are getting bigger and more grandiose. And then um, the whole thing with the whole meme with uh, family as far as Dom goes is getting more intense. So it starts in the first one, but they continue to build on that. They're growing the families and um, all of that sort of stuff. So for me, the uh, watch order, I think, is very important in this case, just because while Too Fast, Too Furious and Tokyo Drift are continuing in the theme of the whole racing scene that was established in the Fast and the Furious, when you watch them as a trilogy of films and then you go into the rest of the franchise, it feels like a very like a weird right turn as far as what they're going in the franchise. But by moving them later, by moving the second and third films later, it, they become a little bit more relevant to the film franchise and a little bit better as far as um, establishing the uh, crew of drivers that are being called upon to, you know, bust drug dealers, bust the bad guys, uh, stop global annihilation, get a sub, stop a plane, and all of that various stuff. So that's really all there is for this particular review. I wanted to just kind of do a quick catch up on a better watching order for the films and then my general thoughts. I mean, overall, it was very good. Um, and then as a bit of side or a bit of a side benefit by watching them this way is you get a better progression of the relationship between um, Tej and Roman and especially Roman as progressively getting to be a more grandiose um, talkative person and then Tej continuing to more and more enjoy messing with him especially like with I think it was in Furious 6 or 7 when we have when he set um, drops a wrecking ball and has the winking emoji on the wrecking ball for as a uh, joke for Roman so I thought that was probably one of the bigger best scenes there and then also um, overriding uh, Roman's break so Roman is scared on the plane during their drop and then um, um, Tej has, does the override so that he does have to fall and out of the plane and, lo- um, and or launch his parachute. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01 and also include maybe your favorite parts, worst parts, most unbelievable parts in the Fast and Furious saga. Uh, Like I said, on um, Twitter at PatelN01 or you can comment on this post by supporting the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. And of course, the website is headphonesnail.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this uh, bonus review, and until next time.